Hello pre-calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. This is Mr. Bean. I'm excited to have my first lesson with you this year. And lucky for us, we have a lesson that is pretty straightforward on arithmetic and geometric sequences. For many of you, this may be a review, which is great news if it is, but I'm gonna approach this like you've never seen these sequences before. That way I make sure I cover everybody from different classes and different states who may have learned different things depending on what teacher you had or what state you're in and all that type of stuff. So let's make sure we cover this pretty well and then, uh, and then you'll be set up to go for the rest of this unit. So to start off, what in the world is a sequence? A sequence is just a set of numbers that we've got listed in order. It could be a finite set of numbers or a list of numbers or an infinite list of numbers. And each listed number is a term. So for example, this number one here, this is the first term right there. And then the next number would be, of course, the second term. And the third number would be the third term. And then yes, the fourth number, the fourth term. Now this might seem like, okay, yeah, duh. But this is important that we recognize the number of the term because that comes into play with some other things we're going to be doing. And then if you see dot, 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 that just means it's infinite. And there's some type of pattern going on here in which that pattern continues forever. And so then we can represent any term after that as considered the nth term. When we call it the nth term, usually, uh, technically it doesn't matter what variable we use as an n, but usually we use n for sequences. So nth term just represents any term that I want to be talking about. The seventh term, the hundred and third term, the five millionth term, and it's just the nth term. Now when we look at the graph, the graph is not a connected smooth curve or straight line or anything like that. It's just these individual points, or we call them discrete points. There's, they're not connected. So in other words, the first term, so this would be the first term, has a value of one. The second term has a value of two. The third term had a value of four. The fourth term had a value of eight. Okay, so that's how we would be able to graph a sequence. It is actual points that are not connected. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of what a sequence is. Now let's talk about arithmetic sequences. So an arithmetic sequence is when you have the successive terms, in other words, one term after the other after the other, if, you, if the difference between those terms has what we call a common difference, or in other words, a constant rate of change. Common difference is just how far apart the numbers are. If that's the same between every single term, then it's arithmetic. We can calculate any term in the sequence with the following equation. So a naught, I say naught like this, a naught, which is kind of physics things for those of you who are in your science classes, uh, that's what that stands for. So a naught is the initial value or the zero term. Now we haven't talked about the zero term yet. We talked about the first term, the second term. We haven't talked about the zero term. We'll get to that. And then D is that common difference where it's the difference between every single term. And they ha every term has to have the same difference. That's the only way it's arithmetic. So here's a, we're gonna come up with an equation or a rule based off of this that we just have right here for this sequence. So our first term is a two, second term is a five. What's the difference? It's a difference of three. Third term's an eight. What's the difference between the second and third term? It's a difference of three and so forth. So that, that difference is common. Three, three, three. We'd be adding each time. Okay, so this is an increasing arithmetic sequence because it has a common difference and it's getting larger and larger. So let's come up with the rule. What was my difference? My difference was, I said, a positive three. I'm increasing by three. And then what about my a naught. What in the world is that on this case? So this is my first term. Let me use a different color here and I'll throw you off. My first term, my second term, my third term, my fourth term. What about the zero term? What is that? Well, the way you do that is you work backwards. So we'd be subtracting three each time. And so if we took the first term and subtracted three, we would be at negative one. So my a naught is a negative one. And now that lets me come up with my rule. So my rule is a sub n. Now, just real quick, a sub n is just like uh, function notation. It's the same thing as this, a of n, like that. It's the same exact idea. It's just with sequences, we tend to like to write it like this because mathematicians <laughs> like to have all these different rules for things. All right, so this is a sequence. a sub n equals, uh, what did I say? The initial value was a negative one. So negative one, and then I'm adding three for every n. That's the rule right there. So I have my naught, my a naught, my initial term, and then plus the common difference times n. That's where this comes from. And then we can use this to figure out the 100th term. So the 100th term of the arithmetic sequence is going to be negative one plus three times 100 
and then you just calculate that out. 3 times 100 is 300, minus 1, 299. So the 100th term of this sequence, if it continued out 100 times, it would be 299 is that 100th term. Now I should comment, which I didn't do, is that just A, the variable A, it doesn't matter what letter we use. It could be F g like a function type of a thing but the only reason we like to write a is it does help us recognize that it is arithmetic so the a kind of stands for arithmetic but it is absolutely not necessary to write that in order to get the problems right right I'll, you'll see in the solutions i'll have a's written for arithmetic sequences but you could have used any variable you wanted as long as it matched up with your correct rule or the equation all right let's do now instead of using initial value let's use any term we want. So instead of the initial term, we can use any term. And that's actually kind of nice about this. This formula is choose any term you want, and then you're just going to say plus d instead of times n, it's going to be d times n minus the term number. All right, so let's show you what I mean here. I have the exact same sequence, increasing by 3, so my, my common difference is a 3. And now I'm going to use the first term. So the first term is a 2. So I could just say 2 plus and then my common difference difference was a 3. And then I'm going to say n minus 1. So 1 represents that it's the first term, and this 2 is the first term. Okay, so how would we do if we wanted to come up with the uh, equation for this here, for the, for the 2? Well, the second term is a 5. So we say 5 plus 3, and then it's times n minus 2, because we used the second term. Okay, so pause real quick, and then I'll write out the answers here. See if you get the same answers as me. And there you go. So here's the other rule. So you can see every single one of these represents this sequence. So there's an infinite number of ways we can come up with a rule just depending on which term we're using. And you just shift it. And that's really convenient because these make it easier to come up with rules as opposed to trying to find the zero term. But if you simplify this, so take the 3 and distribute, take the 3, distribute, add the 5, add the 8, add the 11. If you distribute and simplify all this stuff, you would end up getting the rule for the zero term. They would all become negative 1 plus 3n. Every one of these would become negative 1 plus 3n if you simplified them. So they, they actually are the same rule, they just look a little differently. All right, now last thing on arithmetic, and that is that if it was subtraction instead of addition, it's still arithmetic, right? Because subtraction is just the same thing as adding a negative number. So I just wanted to see show you here, if it's subtraction, it just means it's a decreasing arithmetic sequence. So let's use the first term to set a rule. What's How much are we decreasing by? We're going down by, we're subtracting 5 each time, right? Subtract 5, subtract 5, yeah. So that just means that we'd have our arithmetic sequence is going to equal, any term in that sequence is going to equal, uh, what's the first term? A 7? So 7, and then we're subtracting 5 instead of adding 5, and then it's times n minus 1 since it's the first rule. Now, yeah, I could distribute the negative 5, simplify this, and we'd come up with the zero term rule, but it wasn't necessary for this. Okay, so that's the answer here. Next up, we have the geometric sequences. So geometric sequences, similar to arithmetic, except instead of adding something, we're going to be multiplying something. So what we do is we have this thing called a common ratio. Not a common difference, but a common ratio. It's a ratio between two terms. So or another way of talking about it is a constant proportional change. Uh, yeah, fancy words here. All right, so th th we call this a geometric. So the rule of this is the following. If you, Now notice here I said A, or excuse me, I said G instead of an A. G again doesn't matter what variable we use. We just like to use a G because it represents geometric, but it's not wrong if you don't use a G. So in this case we're going to take the initial term, the G, the G naught, the initial term, and we're going to multiply it by an R, a common ratio, raised to the nth power. So let's find an equation or a rule that represents this sequence. So what are we multiplying by each time? Sometimes it's hard to see. This one's easier because you can just see how do you multiply from 2 to 6? Well, that's just a 3. Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3. In fact, what I do, and this is good because when you look at a problem, you don't know if the sequence is geometric or if it's arithmetic. So the first thing I do is I say, okay, well, that's a difference of 4. And then that's not a difference of 4. So I stop. I'm like, okay, immediately I know it's not arithmetic because it doesn't have the same uh, difference. So then I think, all right, well, how do I multiply to get there? Sometimes it's hard to see, so I go, I go backwards. I think, start at the 6 and go backwards there. 6 divided by 2. What is 6 divided by 2? It's 3. And once I've done that, then I just check. Is 3 the common ratio? 2 times 3 is 6. 
6 times 3 is 18. 18 times 3 is 54. Yeah, so I'm just multiplying by 3 every single time. Multiply by 3. So this is my r. r equals 3. All right, so again, I would divide going backwards. It's much easier to figure out what the r is. And then what about my initial value? So this was the first term. So how do I get my, not a, I'm using g for geometric now. There we go, g naught. How do I get my initial term g? So I would be dividing by 3 going backwards, right? So I'd have this 2, and I would be dividing by 3. That's how I'd get back to my 0 term. If that's my first term and I want my 0 term, I'd have to divide by 3 to go backwards, OK? So now I've got everything I need. And my rule is to find any nth term of the sequence, I just say I start with 2 thirds, and then I multiply by, what is my uh, common ratio? My common ratio is 3. I'm multiplying by 3 every single time, and that's being raised to the nth power. OK, so that's the rule if I was looking at the 0 term. So it's a nice, clean rule with not a lot of extra stuff. And just like arithmetic, there is more ways to figure this out. You could use any term you want instead of the zero term. So the zero term makes it nice and clean, but it's easier to use any term you want to use. And you do that with this rule here. So you choose any term you want in the geometric sequence, and then you do r raised to the, instead of raised to the n, it's raised to the n minus k. That n minus k has to be inside the exponent there. All right, so let's come up with some other ways. Let's say, I wanted to say, if I was using the very first term, so k equals 1, what would a rule be? My rule would be g of n equals, so what's the first term? First term is a 2, and then I'm multiplying by, remember I was multiplying by 3 each time, so it's 3 raised to the, and now it's n minus 1 because I used the first term. This rule right here is exactly the same as this rule that I came up with, with for the zero term. They are identical. You could even work through that and see with some of your algebra skills, which we'll actually going to practice some exponent rules later in this unit, but that would equal the same thing. All right, how about if k equals 4? Let's just do one more real quick. If you had the fourth term, then g of n would equal, what's the fourth term? 54. So 54 times the common ratio is still a 3, We're multiplying by 3 each time, but now we have to say n minus 4 in the exponent. And that would give you exactly the same rule for every number in the sequence. All right, then lastly, last thing we got to look at is Sometimes you end up dividing. So you see this 64 times something is 16. It's actually division. And it might be hard to tell. So what I always do, just like I did on the last problem, I would divide going this way. So let's use division. Oops, division right there. So how do we do that? We'd say 16 divided by 64. Now that might be a little hard to see. So let's try, how about that one? 4, it's going to be the same thing. 4 divided by 16. Or you could take the 1 and divide by 4. See, it's going to equal 1 over 4. All of these would reduce to 1 over 4. That is my common ratio. So, And then you would just have to double check. 64 times a fourth is 16. 16 times a fourth is 4. See, it's dividing by 4. But when we divide by numbers, so instead of dividing by 4, we write a fraction that's in between 0 and 1. So dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. So that's why it's still geometric. We're still multiplying by a number. All right, so let's write down our, let's write down our answer here. So our, it's geometric, so g of n equals, we're going to use k equals 1, so that's the first term, 64. And then the common ratio was a 1 fourth. We're multiplying by 1 fourth each time, and then that's raised to the n minus 1. And again, that 1 fourth tells us it's getting smaller, so it's a decreasing geometric sequence. All right, so that was the last problem. I only want to show you a quick little visual, and then we're all done. And that is, in the next some of our lessons, we're going to pull this all together. And that is an arithmetic sequence is going to look like a bunch of dots that would form a line if we connected it. As opposed to geometric would have a nice curve here, and that would be exponential. If you notice the difference between them, so the difference for an arithmetic sequence, every single step is going to have the same increase. We step one here, we went up one. 1, 1. Or it might be an increase of 2. It might be an increase of 3. The important thing is it's a consistent common difference. They would be this increasing by exactly the same amount. Whereas a geometric sequence, will the for every step, the increase is getting bigger and bigger. So increase by a half, increase by 1, increase by 2, and so forth. It just grows larger and larger with every succeeding step. All right, hopefully that all makes sense to you. 
This is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that mastery check, and I will see you back in our next lesson.